Chapter 13 Zawin, scythe uplifted, gazed all about, happy at his games. He chuckled a most delicious chuckle, spat fiery spittle on his horny hands, clenched the scythe tighter, swung it up and froze, for somewhere, someone was singing. Somewhere near the top of a hill in a small clump of trees, a small bonfire flickered. Men like shadows were gathered there, lifting up their arms and chanting. Thawin listened, his scythe like a great smile in his arms. O oh, Samhain, god of the dead, hear us. We, the holy druid priests in this grove of trees, the great oaks, plead for the souls of the dead. Far away, these strange men by their bright fire lifted metal knives, lifted cats and goats in their hands and chanting. We pray for the souls of those who are turned to beasts. O oh God of the dead, we sacrifice these beasts so that you will let free the souls of our loved ones who died this year. The knives flashed. Dawin smiled an even greater smile. The animals shrieked. All around the boys on the earth, the grass, the rocks, the trapped souls, lost in spiders, locked in roaches, but away in fleas and pillbugs and centipedes, gaped and yammered silent yammers and twitched and roiled. Tom winced. He thought he heard a million small, oh very microscopic, fleets of pain. And release from around him, where the centipedes capered, spiders danced. Let free, let be, prayed the druids on the hill. The fire blazed. A sea wind roared over the meadows, brushed the rocks, touched at the spiders, rolled the pillbugs, tumbled the roaches. The tiny spiders, insects, the miniature dogs and cows fluffed away like a million snowflakes. The tiny souls trapped in the insect bodies dissolved. Released with vast cavern whisper, they whistled up to the sky. To heaven, cried the druid priests. Oh, free, go! They flew. They vanished in the air with a great sigh of thanks and much gratitude. Thawin, god of the dead, shrugged and let them go. Then just as suddenly, he stiffened, as did the hidden boys in Mr. Mound Shroud crouched in the rocks. Through a valley and across the hill ran an army of Roman soldiers, a troop on the double. Their leader ran before them, shouting, Soldiers of Rome, destroy the pagans! Destroy the unholy religion! Suetonius so orders! Or Suetonius. Thawin in the sky raised his scythe too late. The soldiers slammed swords and axes into the bases of the holy druid oaks. Thawin shrieked in pain as if the axes had chopped his knees. The holy trees groaned, whistled, and with a final chop thundered to earth. Thawin trembled in the high air. The druid priests fleeing stopped and shuddered. The trees fell. The priests chopped at the ankles. The knees fell. They were blown over like oaks in a hurricane. No! roared Samhain in the high air. But yes! cried the Romans. Now! The soldiers gave a final mighty blow. And Samhain, god of the dead, born at his roots, stopped at his ankles, began to fall. The boys staring up leaped out of the way, for it was like a giant forest falling all in one fall. They were shadowed by his midnight descent. The thunder of his death came before him. He was the greatest tree in all existence ever. The tallest oak ever to plummet down and die. Down he came through the wild air, screaming, flailing to hold himself up. Dowan hit the earth. He dropped with a roar that shook the bones of the hills and snuffed the holy fires. And with Samhain cut and down and dead, 
The last of the druid hopes fell with him, like wheat cut with a final scythe, his own huge scythe, a vast smile lost in the fields, dissolved into a puddle of silver and sank into the grass. Silence. A moldering, smoldering of fires, a blowing of leaves. Instantly the sun went down. The druid priests bled in the grass as the boys watched, and the Roman captain prowled the dead fires, kicking the holy ashes. Here we shall build our temples to our gods. The soldiers lit new fires and burned incense before golden idols which they set in place. But no sooner lit than a star shone in the east. On far desert sands to camel bells, these three wise men moved. The Roman soldiers lifted their bronze shields against the glare of the star in the sky, but their shields melted. The Roman idols melted and became shapes of Mary and her son. The soldiers' armor melted, dripped, and chained, changed. They were dressed now in the garments of priests, who sang Latin before yet newer altars. Even as Mount Shroud, crouched, squinting, weighed the scene, and whispered it to his small, masked friends. Ay, boys, see? Gods following gods. The Romans cut the Druids, their oaks, their god of the dead, bang, down and put in their own gods, eh? Now the Christians run and cut the Romans down. New altars, boys. New incense. New names. The wind blew the altar candles out. In darkness, Tom cried out. The earth shuddered and spun. Rain drenched them. What's happening, Mr. Moundshroud? Where are we? Moundshroud struck a flinty thumb into fire and held it up. Why, bless me, boys, it's the Dark Ages, the longest, darkest night ever. Christ long since come and gone in the world, and... Where's Pipkin? Here, cried a voice from the black sky. I think I'm on a broom. It's taking me away. Hey, me too, said Ralph, and then JJ, and then Hackles Nibbly, and Wally Bab, and all the rest. There was a huge whisper like a gigantic cat stroking its whiskers in the dark. Brooms, muttered Mound Shroud. Gathering of the brooms. The October Broom Festival. The annual migration. To where? asked Tom, calling up, for everyone was making traffic on the air now in whisking shrieks. The broom works, of course. Help, I'm flying, said Henry Hank. Whisk! A broom whistled him away. A great, brambly cat flashed by Tom's cheek. He felt a wooden pole between his legs jump up. Hang on, said Mound Shroud. When attacked by a broom, only one thing to do. Hold tight. I'm holding, cried Tom, and flew away. <laughs>